There's a lot to digest, and we're chewing on all of it for you. So what do you say? Let's get after it. Noel Francisco, great name. However, no early Christmas present for Noel. Should I stay or should I go? No Joe Strummer, sadly, but the clash between Rosenstein and Trump is in full effect. That Noel joke was the worst thing ever written. But don't ever bring the clash into your sick, ugly games, you freak. <laughs> So, pretty slow news week. <laughs> I know, I know, we want to talk about the big story. It all unfolded on Thursday, and it was pretty explosive. HR's going to send someone up to interview as your new secretary. Oh, goody. I haven't had one of those in a while. <laughs> I'm here to interview for the secretarial position. Hillary? Yes, Hillary. Hillary Clendon. Uh, yes! Hillary was on Murphy Brown. Good for her, I say. If you can't be president, then do cameos on <laughs> rehashed sitcoms. <laughs> hey, in a year, in a year, who bets she ends up as the next Colonel Sanders? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I know something else happened. Uh, but we're going to get to the Kavanaugh stuff in the next segment. You can wait. But first, let's dig into a nice, big, healthy bucket of Trump. Yeah, bucket of Trump. So now that Donald Trump has made America great again, he's going to make the world a better place, too. But is the world ready for that? Here's Trump pulling a Gordon Ramsay at the U.N., about to tell him that their menu sucks. My administration has accomplished more than almost any administration in the history of our country. America's so true. <laughs> Didn't expect that reaction, but that's okay. Laugh if you must, you small, meaningless bureaucrats. What have you done lately besides boozing on our dime and chasing hookers? Love it or hate it, Trump's the leader of the free world, and he's ready to give the planet a little tough love. Germany will become totally dependent on Russian energy if it does not immediately change course. Moving forward, we are only going to give foreign aid to those who respect us, OPEC nations, are, as usual, ripping off the rest of the world. And I don't like it. <laughs> Nobody should like it. Nobody should like it. You know, he's like the American Santa. He's telling the world who's been naughty and nice, but everybody's naughty. Everybody on his list is naughty. And he's just getting started. I don't like what's happening in Cuba, and I certainly don't like what's happening in Venezuela. Iran's going to come back to me, and they're going to make a good deal. I think. Maybe not. Deals. You never know. Yemen's a mess. Syria is a mess. Not happy with OPEC. I like China, and I like President Xi a lot. I think he's a friend of mine. He may not be a friend of mine anymore. He's got an opinion on everyone. To him, Earth is just another location for Celebrity Apprentice. <laughs> Cuba, you're fired. And of course, there's that relationship with China. They flirt. They play hard to get. It's like a geopolitical version of Ross and Rachel from Friends. He was saying that China has total respect for Donald Trump and for Donald Trump's very, very large uh, brain. <laughs> For a minute there, for a minute there, you thought it wasn't going to be brain. That pause he did was amazing. And who can, who can forget the letter, the magnificent letters? He said, this is actually a groundbreaking letter. This is an incredible, this is a historic letter. He wrote me two of the most beautiful letters. I've received two letters from Chairman Kim. They're incredible letters. They're... They're letters that are magnificent. 
I got the, that is some letter. I think what the letters are is D and T. And boy, he gave it to the Kurds. Excuse me, you said where from where? Rudal Media Network from Kurdistan region, north okay. of Iraq. I'm a Kurd. Good. Um, Good. Sir, Great people. Thank you, sir. Great Mr. people. President, Mr. President, thank you. I wanna, are you a Kurd? Mr. President. Kurd. You a Kurd? I'm just going to ask that to everybody. And even Canada didn't get out without a kick in the cranberries. Did you reject a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the Canadian Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau? Yeah, I did. Why? Because his tariffs are too high and he doesn't seem to want to move, and I've told him, forget about it. <laughs> forget about it. It's like, he, it's like he's talking to his plumber. And not an actual world leader. Well, Canada. Anyway, so who's great now? You know who's great now? We're great now. <laughs> That's right. Which is why he's now into changing the world. Like a real estate developer from Queens, he's done with one project, United States, and he's moving on to another. And get this, and this is really, really important. None of the stuff he's talking about involves military force. And shouldn't that be something that lefties embrace and love about this guy? Instead of flexing military muscle, he toys with the failing New York Times. Stand up, go ahead. The failing New York Times, stand up, go ahead. I think ABC, CBS, NBC, The Times, Washington, they're all gonna endorse me because if they don't, they're going out of business. Can you imagine if they didn't have me? No, we can't imagine that at all. So all in all, he realizes for America to be greater, you know, Earth needs a little work too. And he's willing to lead the enterprise peacefully. What could be the possibilities? Sunday, 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 get ready for the most globally electrifying event ever. It's the Trump versus the UN World Reboot Awesomization Extravaganza. He's made America great, and now Donald the Diplomatic Mastermind Trump is taking the battle international by improving those stupid rocks on Easter Island, turning Siberia into a meat locker for Trump steaks, adding pants to Michelangelo's David, mopping up Venice, replacing windmills in Holland with coal mines, making Big Ben a digital clock, fitting Mount Everest with an escalator, decorating the Great Wall of China with Bob Ross paintings. Plus, he's fixing the Leaning Tower of Pisa with a team of non-union construction workers. And don't miss the all-American finale. Will Trump finally fix the broken Liberty Bell or put a more awesome face on Mount Rushmore? Get your tickets now to find out. The first 100 guests get a free to column from the Parthenon, signed by Donald Trump. It's the Trump versus the UN World Reboot Awesomization Extravaganza! Period. Let's welcome tonight's guest. She's so bright, the North Star calls her for advice attorney and Trump campaign advisory board member, Madison Jesse Otto. And he's so smart it hurts. Washington Times opinion editor and Fox News contributor, Charlie Hurts. She's so bright, she moonlights as moonlight. National Review reporter, Kat Tim. And... His neighbors all have earthquake insurance. Former WWE superstar, my massive sidekick, Tyrus. Charles, it's so interesting when there are people talking about that press conference and they act like it's some kind of weird freak show. And I'm looking at it and I'm going, I'm watching a guy with an incredibly nimble mind bounce all over every single issue. And, and talk about fixing them as though it's a construction project. Yeah. And it's not only that, but also, I mean, the guy's comedic timing yeah. is just, it's killer. Yeah. And when he did the thing about uh, talking about uh, how great the administration is and everybody laughed, yeah. uh, and, and in this room everybody laughed, yeah. they laughed at the exact right times. The guy totally gets it. Yeah, and yeah. It's, that, it's that humor that, that, uh, that the, and, and of course, the, all these despots in the world and, and, and in the room who, did, uh, who got it, just proving that, that of course, the press uh, has less of a sense of humor than despots around the world. Um, the, but, but, no, but, but the other thing is that basically the attack on Donald Trump right now is that he's not perfect. 
That's what upsets them. So when he goes and he talks and he uh, meets with Kim Jong Un, uh, Kim Jong Il, um, the, the the complaint is, oh well, you haven't gotten peace fast enough. Yeah. It's not, it, it, and it, absolutely, the guy can't win. Yeah. And they constantly, and they did this throughout the campaign, uh, and they're continuing to do it. They constantly move the goalposts with it. You know what? Uh, uh, Charlie brings up a good point, which is uh, rare, Madison. <laughs> um, <laughs> The media is wrong about Trump in the fact, and, and, and but they because they think that the world finds him comical or weird. But I I have a theory that a lot of the world isn't like Manhattan. The world is pretty old school alpha. They're like 30 years, 40 years back when people when the when the world leaders were like Trump. So he's kind of entertaining and refreshing or something. That's my theory. It free, feel free to ignore it and answer the own question that might be in your mind. I mean, I think he was very funny yeah. at his press conference. I think he's hilarious a lot of the times, but I think he's very successful, and that's the thing that the media fails to report mm -hmm. on. Yeah. You know, look at everything that he did throughout the U.N. this week. It was an extremely successful week. They signed a revised trade agreement with South Korea, open trade talks with Japan, uh, of course, going after China, who no president before in 25 years has really gone after for their unfair trade practices. He, they said, you know, he could never have peace mm -hmm. in certain areas. Guess what? Look what he's doing with North Korea. It's only the beginning there. And so I think people are just ignoring the fact that he's been extremely successful. They're judging him on words instead of actions and results. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, Kat, he's not a neocon. This has got, I mean, like, let's face it, he's, change, you know, all, he's changing the world without bombs. And that, I mean, that's kind of what I would call progress, maybe? I... That's one of the things that I do like about him mm -hmm. is that he tends to want to use diplomacy and talking and making deals rather than just going to war with everyone. Yeah. And I thought that that was something that was very interesting in the general election when he was running against Hillary Clinton, even though she was a Democrat. Yeah. She was a neo-Democrat. Yes. So she certainly would have gone. To, I think we would be at war right now in places <laughs> that we're not at war mm -hmm. if we had had Hillary Clinton as president instead of Donald Probably Trump. Probably with Canada. We might be at war with Canada. <laughs> yeah. And Australia. <laughs> and, and think about it. What, what is the one time the establishment applauded Donald Trump? It's when he bombed Syria. It's yeah. the only time. Yeah, exactly. Liked they love a good bomb. I, yeah. I did not like. I did not care for that. You did not care for that. <laughs> I did not care for that. Yeah. Anything else? Any thoughts? I mean, I want to talk about Ross and Rachel again. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I just don't think it should have taken that long for them to work it out. Yeah, that, did, that is true. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's Thanks. almost getting a smattering of applause. <laughs> they were on a break. Tyrus. I, I look at when he speaks to the world and when he, when he when gives his speeches, a lot like someone who just beat the rap on a case and everyone who testified against him is at the barbecue and he just showed up. Yeah. <laughs> They're all, he knows every one of them. Is that, I know what every one of you did, but I'm here. And so the laughing is a lot of nervous laughing. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's, That's true. He's coming from a place of power, and I think he's probably one of the, I can't remember, uh, a president who chose to use it. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. listen to me when I speak. Yeah. And if you don't, you're going to wish you had. Mm -hmm. It's very underlying. It's, he kind of talks them in a way very similar, like when somebody borrows money from me and they don't pay it back. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He, ap he appeals to your senses. Mm -hmm. Like, say, for example, Joe, you like walking. <laughs> Joe so will say, yes, I do. Well, for you to continue to do so, you need to pay me the money I lent you plus 10%. That <laughs> is how he talks to the world, and I think they get it. Joe got it. Yeah. Yeah, Joe got it. <laughs> is, he, is he walking? Joe? Yeah. He will be fine. <laughs> He's healing nicely in an undisclosed location. All right, coming up, did anything else happen this week? Hmm, I don't think so. So what have we learned from the Kavanaugh hearings? Christine Blasey Ford's testimony was compelling, but it was also confusing. At times it was like watching people's court. Rachel Mitchell asking direct questions, getting direct answers, and just when it was getting somewhere, the Democrats would start talking. We'd go from a procedural line of fact-finding to high emotional drama. But then this guy broke through. I would never do to them what you've done to this guy. This is the most unethical sham since I've been in politics. This is not a job interview. Yeah. This is hell. This, this, this is going to destroy the ability of good people to come forward because of this crap. He reminds, he reminds me of when I'm at the rental car counter and I wanted the convertible Sebring. But they didn't have any convertibles. But that was amazing. 
Anyway, but at the end of this, did we learn any new facts about a 35-year-old incident? Look, I still don't know what happened. I didn't go to school with Kavanaugh or Ford. Will an FBI investigation give us more answers? I don't know, but I believe that they believe their stories. So here's what I do know. Political tribalism now includes public acts of personal destruction. It's ghoulish. The Democrats could have avoided this show trial by acting immediately when they first got the letter instead of sitting on it, which led to a twisted circus that ruined reputations, humiliated victims, and their families. The lesson in politics, collateral damage, is now totally acceptable. Who cares if you destroy a family or two? You still block that seat. Good for you. We looked hard to find a group of people more civil than the hearings. Here's what we found. So maybe it's not so bad, but maybe Michael Moore was right after all. Time to move to Canada. What are your thoughts about the hearings in general? Where we, now obviously, they're, they're doing a uh, week-long FBI investigation. General thoughts on this, Madison, as a lawyer? I think Lindsey Graham really did say it best when he said, you want a fair process? We came to the wrong town at the wrong time, my friend. Yeah. And I think that's really what it's come down to. Nothing about this has been fair. You wouldn't be able to get a search warrant or an arrest warrant for something like this. And we now have an FBI investigation. Of course, taxpayer money is funding that yeah. into something that we're not going to have any more answers on in a week from now. I, I would bet my life on that. We're not going to have any more information. They're saying they're going to interview Mr. Judge. He already mm. presented his statement yeah. under penalty of perjury. Yeah, so, so what's he going to do? What is he, he, I don't think he's going to change his story. That would be insane. Yeah. Uh, Tyrus, um, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think this testimony changed any minds? No, I, I think that's the issue we have in this country now. Nobody's mind's being changed, period, on, on anything. Mm -hmm. And I don't think uh, either way, both both people were credible. Mm -hmm. I think the crime is that they just happened to be involved with our Senate. Mm -hmm. I think that's the issue. <laughs> I, think, I think that's the issue. I think that, that if never there was a time now for term limits on the Senate, mm -hmm. it is now. Mm -hmm. The fact whether you're... Whether you're... Whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, enough. The fact in this country that we have 51 to 50 votes, that we have all Democrats on one side, all, that's not what you were elected for. Your job was to get the best deal for the American people, not your own thing. And all we're seeing is even after today when the deal was made, basically, we're going to pass him through, mm -hmm. rightfully so, because we don't have enough evidence to say otherwise, and we're going to still do an FBI investigation. Mm -hmm. So the right thing to do for the Democrats is a show of good faith, for them meeting them halfway was to vote yes. Mm -hmm. We all agree we're going to vote them through and then we're going to investigate it. Yeah. That would have been a message to the American people like these guys get it but no that's not what they really want. Yeah. Because it's not about that. Yeah. It's the civil war in the Senate that we all have to deal with. It has nothing to do with whether this woman was assaulted or not. Yeah. That's why they won't commit to one side or the other. We believe both people but I have to say no. I believe <laughs> both but I have to say yes. The Senate is disgraceful and we should at, regardless of your party affiliation, enough is enough. We need to start getting new Republicans in there and new Democrats in there and independents in there and people who are actually going to work for the people and not their self. It was disgraceful. Mm. <laughs> Kat, what are your thoughts on this? My thoughts? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know, and I know that that is going to be a huge disappointment Mm -hmm. to all of the certainly millions, if not trillions, of people who watch me and, de <laughs> yes. and they decide what to think based on what I think because they admire me uh, so much. Um, oh, I've seen it. Yeah, I've so seen it. I hate, but I, I really just don't, I don't know. Yeah. I wasn't there. I, I don't know. Yes. I'm wandering. Do you know, as last, Same as last <laughs> week. I feel like I'm wandering around in a forest, and I see all these people on both sides who claim to know for sure, and they're so raw about it on both sides. And I think that a lot of people are deciding based on partisanship. They're mm -hmm. not deciding based on the facts, because based on the facts, how could you know? No one will ever know. No one will ever and, know. And I, 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 I'm telling you, the one thing I've learned, uh, uh, Charlie, is that the nature of memory is oh. imperfect, and we're talking, I do believe that they, 
believe their stories, and both stories are probably flawed. But I don't know. Uh, to, to echo and Kat, I, yeah. but I but I do I, I do think that we are the progress that we're making is in the area of understanding memory over time. That we ha we have to start thinking about. Like, what is true in somebody's head is not true in somebody else's. I, I don't trust my memory from this morning. No, I, neither do much I. Much less, like, <laughs> yeah. last week. I had to or... tell you to put on pants. <laughs> and I don't That's even all. do any drugs anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, anymore. It's anymore. It's been three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, uh, I, I would say, actually, uh, I did change my mind uh, uh, listening to the testimony. Uh, going in, I thought that uh, Dr. Ford was a uh, political... Uh, yeah, I, th I thought she was politically motivated. I thought she was trying to take out this guy um, mm. and doing everything that, that uh, she could to just, because, you know, the first time he ever, she, uh, she ever uttered his name to anybody was after he'd been floated as a, p a potential Supreme Court nominee. Mm -hmm. Listening to her testimony, I found it riveting, and I found her totally believable, and I ca left, came away thinking, my goodness, obviously this woman is not what I thought she was. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, uh, uh, not to do exactly what Tyrus said is uh, he's sick and tired of, but th but then you listen to uh, Brett Kavanaugh and what he said, <laughs> and I totally believed him. Yeah. And I and at that point you it's you can't prove it, you can't know. So all you can do then is evaluate all the other evidence. Right. And when you evaluate all the other evidence, no rational person can come down come down on any other d decision, but that they didn't prove their case. Right. But one thing that I would say that is different today, and I think this is a very good thing in America, that is different today. 30 years ago, or 20 years ago, uh, Bill Clinton would have sent his war dogs out to call her trailer trash mm -hmm. and say that, oh, yeah, you can bring, you know, you can get anybody to say anything if you just drag a $20 bill through a trailer park. Mm -hmm. That's not acceptable now. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And this woman was, whether you Republican, Democrat, by and large, uh, you can't f find a single person on the Republican side who trashed her or did anything but said, let's, we let's. want to hear her out. And it was totally respectful. And that is a tremendous uh, improvement over uh, the Clinton years when Paula Jones was called trailer trash. Right. And a liar. Did you want to? I, I, I have a question, Greg. You're, you never get asked questions, but I have a question for you besides yes. the fact you're always negative to me on the monologues, but forget that. Um, <laughs> Is it possible, because it always goes back to the leak for me, real yeah, quick. Yeah. Is it possible to, that Feinstein sat on this because she didn't think it had enough credibility? Feinstein is denying that she leaked it. She then looked to her staff, and the staff said, oh, we didn't do it, but they, we don't know that. And that, so she seems to be saying that maybe the victim leaked it. So she's throwing the victim under the bus. It's all a mess, but uh, we got to move on. Still to come, Uncle Sam wants you uh, wants to help you get a bigger airline seat. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> Should the government take the broom to crappy leg room? The House passed a 2,000-page bill that would require the FAA to make some changes to the way we fly, including minimum requirements for seat sizes and leg room, Tyrus. Because let's face it, airline seats are getting tighter than bike shorts on a hippo. <laughs> Trust me, my hippo hates putting them on. But I love watching him take them off. <laughs> Enough with the hippo stuff. Leg room is shrinking, even I've noticed, and I don't have that much leg. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know we're a very divided nation, but we can all agree flying sucks. But should government be in charge of this? And if they think they can handle legroom, why not the slapdash boarding process or the super tiny bathrooms? I can't even read in there. <laughs> Try to read it like the Wall Street Journal, your hands or try like that. It's impossible. Here, or the food. Yeah, let's talk about the food. Here's a video I took of my flight attendant trying to cook my eggs. <laughs> oh, man, I burned my mouth on that. All right, I, go, I have to go to you, Tyrus, for no Jeez, apparent reason. Oh, I don't know why you <laughs> size this pig. <laughs> Hey, everybody, Greg has a hard time fitting in the bathroom at the airplane. Does anyone really feel sorry for him? You know, like, um, for real, he can you, you live in that as an apartment. Like, look, 
<laughs> Listen, this is a serious thing. Would you, would you want government you intervention? Know what? You need to be quiet because this is serious. I don't. If this was an issue about having the little thing to help you sit with your feet right on the toilet, I would not talk bad about you. <laughs> potty, what's, what's that called? Potty pals? Yeah, if it was about potty pals, I would be quiet and respectful to your plight that your feet don't touch the ground when you use the bathroom. <laughs> I get it. But this is a. Thank you. Like, how dare you? I have actual footage of me suffering in an airplane. Yes. Try, I know it would take two of your feet to be in one of my shoes. Look at that. By the way, the evasive bastard who took that picture was none other than Greg Gutfeld. That's no true. privacy. No privacy. Look at that. That's first. And someone's like, yo, they, Fox doesn't fly you first class? That is first class. <laughs> There's even one that shows the way I sleep. Most people, look at that. I have to lean to the side. It's, it's brutal. So normally... Like my libertarian friend Cat over here, mm -hmm. I don't like government and nothing. But if Uncle Sam's got to get in, so give me out the jam, I'm with it. Like, <laughs> help me out. All right, that's. I, Cat, am can be a hypocrite about libertarian beliefs, as you know. Yes. Uh, I hate big government unless they do things that I like. Sure. So, what about you? I am not a hypocrite. <laughs> I think that if an airline wanted to exist where they just like stack people on each other's laps and it was cheaper, I think that would be a great alternative. <laughs> I think that they should be able to do whatever you want. I think that you should be able to fly people in planes without seats where you just Stand. meander about and vape. I think that that should be allowed. I, I don't like that the government tells me that I have to put on my seat belt mm -hmm. because of the turbulence. I am a grown ass woman. <laughs> I can handle my own turbulence how I want to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> However, the planes are a little cold for me. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. They're always a little cold. I always have to wear socks. Uh, under my sandals. Oh, terrible. And people say, Kat, why don't you just wear tennis shoes? Well, because then I have to untie them mm -hmm. and take them off because of, you know, the TSA infringing upon my rights right, every time right, I want right. to travel. And uh, I'm 29, and I am too old to have the energy to do that already. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. This is worse than watching Old Yeller hearing her problems on air. <laughs> I am, I am crying tears from my heart. Yes. It's chilly. It's um, chilly. It's, it's I feel as though I'm in a tundra. <laughs> you would be if you didn't have your seatbelt on when the turbulence hit. You're like a, what, 68 pounds soaking wet and with I, one of my shoes, you'd be bouncing over the plane without a little seatbelt. I, I prefer to leave my seatbelt unbuckled and I put a blanket over my head and I vape underneath just to prove to myself that I am still free. Well, you know what? Uh, you, you truly are revolutionary. <laughs> uh, um, Char Char Charlie, it scares me that regulations do more harm than good. Like, there, there's a limit for stewardesses for 10-hour shifts. That means if you're on the tarmac, right, and you're about to take off, but it, you, let's say it's, it's delayed for 45 minutes, and it's past a stewardess's shift, they could probably turn around and dump you. Oh, totally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I despise the airlines. I despise all airlines. Um, it's why I, I, I would drive, I, I'd make a 12 hour drive easy uh, yeah. to avoid having to get into an airplane. Mm. Uh, but the only people that could actually make the. the <laughs> 12 uh, hours with you? It, oh, God. <laughs> anyway, sorry. The, the only thing that could, uh, that could make things worse than, a, than an airline would be the federal government. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but everybody complains about TSA. I, am I the only one who likes to go through TSA? I don't mind yes. it. Yes. I love yes, it. You yes, you are 100 I don't mind it. In some, air, some airports, they're fantastic, and other ones are just angry, but most of the guys are pretty good, and they're fans of this show. So remember that when you, <laughs> when you start feeling me up. I like you say, sometimes they'll put things in my pockets. <laughs> All right, Madison, what do you make of this? All about extra room, mm -hmm. but I don't want the regulation. Yeah. Capitalism works. If the planes start getting seats that are too small for people to sit on, people aren't going to fly those exactly. airlines anymore. So it's all going to work itself out. But let me just say one thing, back to what both, pretty much everyone's been saying, the airlines are terrible. Mm. This isn't going to make them better. Even if I'm sitting in a seat that's a little bit bigger, I'm still getting water dripped on my head half the time. Oh, I've been flying a lot lately. Everything is a mess. I like Nothing the, works. The water thing, I actually told They're them. They're not nice. I, I notified them that there was water tripping, and they go, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, sat, I sat down. Condensation. By the way, here's my theory on, on why people are so hostile when they fly. Did anybody ever see the movie Snowpiercer? 
No. No. <laughs> I know there are people who don't. So it's, it, it, we are developing a class system where depending on how much you pay is how much comfort you get. And that's what's happening to the airlines. It's just like Snowpiercer, which was a, tr a segmented capsule divided by wealth. I know they're rapping me because I'm talking about something nobody watched. <laughs> Go see Snowpiercer. That's the way the airlines are coming up. All right. He says he's 4% black. Now he claims he's a minority business owner. We discussed this next. You didn't see that? <laughs> he's getting flack for saying he's black. I speak of Ralph Taylor, who took one of those DNA tests, which revealed to him that he was 90% European, 6% Native American, and 4% Sub-Saharan African. Anyway, after Taylor got these results, what did he do? Register as a minority business owner. That's America. Of course, that would give him that would give him a leg up when competing for government contracts. He took his case to the state court and eventually was recognized as a minority. Now it's in the hands of the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which is known to lean liberal. A lot of questions here, of course. How do you legally define race? How uh, can you define it by the percentages on a DNA kit? Also, by the way, I'll have you know that I did take one of these uh, DNA tests. Turns out I'm 20% European and about 80% unicorn. <laughs> Here's me without my makeup on. Come on, cat. Have you ever tried to get certain perks you don't deserve? Isn't that what life is? Yes. <laughs> Yes. Whenever I see stories like this, the only thing I can think is, why are you willingly giving up your DNA without a warrant? Mm, good point. What if he wants to rob a bank someday? True. What if he wants to murder someone? Right. He's going to be <laughs> out of luck. No, it's true. He's, I mean, okay, I don't think that you should live your life with the expectation that you're going to commit a homicide. I do. I, I think that that's probably <laughs> a bad thing. But I, I think that this is kind of a ridiculous story, right? I mean, I, this, I, only be in a society where we're this driven by identity politics would yeah. something like this ever even happen in the first place. I have theories, though. But, Madison, do you think he has a case? It's tough. I don't think he's going to win. Um, no. And I, the one thing I'd like to point on here, though, is the fact that if everyone and everything were treated equally in this country by the same standards, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Mm. So that's something some people have brought up here. Good but at point. the same time, he's he's not going to win this case. That is a very good point. This shouldn't actually matter. Tyrus, he has an, he has a, an Ebony Magazine subscription uh, as, proof, as proof. Uh, is that is, is, it, is that the best evidence? Well, there you have. The, he's good. <laughs> he got a basketball in his garage, perhaps. <laughs> what the hell? If if four percent. Well, I mean, in slaving times, I think four percent. You, I don't. I think you're gonna let you go. Yeah. Here's the deal. <laughs> if he's willing to take a test, if he's willing to take the Tyrus Black test. Okay. <laughs> I will reach out to several members of the clan somewhere, wherever they are, <laughs> and we'll have a meeting. Okay. I will drop him off blindfolded in the meeting. <laughs> yes. And when I take it off, I'm like, he's black, and I'll run out the room. <laughs> if, if he says, yes, I am, do what you must, I will not be, or he goes, no, 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 I'm white, guys. I'm so white. I'm so white. That black guy kidnapped me. I'll help you go get him. Then he's not. That is the best. That's the best. only way to know. That is the <laughs> Charlie, part of, I guess, you know, uh, uh, being uh, in a group of people is the lived experience. So I kind of look at this guy like he's like the Rosie Ruiz of, of race. He, like he jumps in at the end of the marathon and claims to be of that minority. So he wants to get all the uh, benefits of the lived experience without actually living it. I, no, I totally reject this. What do you mean getting things he doesn't deserve? Of course, he, he de if, if we're going to have a system that awards uh, special things to, to people based on on race, then he absolutely deserves yeah. uh, a, 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 a spot at that trough. Now, I happen to think that it's an abominable uh, way to divide the world right. and, and a way to run a government. But if we're going to have an insane system that, that divides people by race, gender, uh, creed, religion, everything, 
uh, why shouldn't he be able to take part of that? Four percent is fine. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the idea that you would use anything other than DNA, of course DNA should be uh, what determines that. And, and, and we, can, it, it, we can be like a Tower of Babel. Everybody runs in, tries to grab the free stuff and, and, uh, and reveal and, and expose what a totally uh, rotten and unfair uh, system everything the federal government touches winds up being, Ugh. especially when they start uh, divvying people up. By Have race. you seen this movie Snowpiercer? Uh, I, you know, um, all right, speaking of, we do have something. It's a dangerous fad when selfies go bad. That's next. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Should we rescue people who put themselves in danger taking Instagram selfies? Depends. Are they liberals? <laughs> that red meat joke courtesy of the red meat joke board. <laughs> yeah, the quest for extreme Instagram photos has led to a rise in rescues, at least in Southern California, wherever that is. Search and rescue teams with the L.A. County Sheriff's Department conducted 681 missions last year, up 40% from five years ago. They say many of their missions happened where cliff jumping is a popular weekend. Poor cliff. <laughs> anyway, with people trying to capture the stunts for social media. Personally, I think human cliff jumping is boring. It's why I only hang out with cliff jumping goats. Now, one of the goats also edited that video, by the way. <laughs> A lot of good rock and music there. Uh, Charles, the county is spending thousands of dollars an hour, an hour on those rescues. Should they? I think they have to, right? Yeah, yeah, you, I think, yeah. But I tell you what they ought to do is they ought to make a big deal out of it uh, and have like maybe like a public uh, hearing where you charge the people mm. that are rescued for the for the uh, for the and and you know and that's and that's actually not a um, unheard of thing. I know that if you get uh, you know if you get stuck out in the wilderness or you get stuck in a uh, you know canoeing down rapids and they have to come in and get you, you can get a bill for it, and they should get a bill for yeah, it. Yeah, that's good. There's a, there was I read a story about one woman who just kept getting uh, rescued in the forest, and I think it was because she liked to get rescued. Yeah. Cat, <laughs> have you ever? Uh, taken a selfie that required you to be saved by uh, men in orange vests? No. Oh. <laughs> not to brag. I'm just not surprised at all that this is happening in Southern California. Mm -hmm. I just got back from Los Angeles, and all some of these people do is take Instagram pictures. Yes. I was not surprised to see these pictures of people dangling from cliffs. Mm -hmm. I was surprised to see that more people weren't doing it with their naked butts out. <laughs> yeah, that's I true. I mean, have you been on Instagram lately? Yeah, a lot of butts. Holy Toledo. I know. Jeez Louise. Emphasis on holy. It's like 35% butts. <laughs> I used to think I was like a fun gal, you know? Like, yeah. you know, Kat, she's a fun gal. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm realizing I'm a bit of a square because I I think that my butt belongs inside of my clothes when I'm in public. <laughs> yeah. Very strong butt enclosed message, Kat. Thank you. I do it for the children. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Madison, should the country just say, you, if, you know, we're not going to rescue you if you're doing it on your own risk, or is that that's? No, I say do it for the gram. If people want to take these pictures, take them. Most of the time, not all the time, but in a lot of places, they're getting sent the bills anyways mm -hmm. for negligence when yeah. they're getting rescued in situations like this. And the advice I would have for people that want to jump off cliffs and take pictures, mm. go to Utah. In Utah, recently, they came out with this thing where you can buy for 20 to 30 dollars somewhere around there a get rescue free card oh wow so if you plan on doing things like this you buy your card everybody pitches in then the people who end up having to get rescued don't have to pay the bill it's covered wow, america is doomed <laughs> yeah it is <laughs> So it's like insurance for, for it's rescue. Yeah, it's rescue Sense insurance. But they insurance did the, the monopoly dumbass. play. Yeah. Made insurance for dumbasses. Dumb insurance, yeah. <laughs> All right, Tyrus. You're, you're on Instagram a lot, usually in the gym, lifting big things. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I take pictures because I'm supposed to put things up on my life. So you see I lift weights and sit on here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's all you get. I, I think we should, I think the rescue teams 
who are, are great men and women in this country, they should, they should have a little bit of fun with this. I, I think your <laughs> rescuing them should be based on the likes they get. Oh. So what you do is, when, when the dude's hanging from the cliff yeah. and has the pitch, the, guy, the rescue guy will come down right next to him where he could possibly save him, yeah. far enough away where he can't reach, and take a picture of him and see, like, you need 200 likes for this rescue to go down. <laughs> mm. And you're only allowed idea. five comments that are negative. <laughs> Sorry, pal. All right, let's roll it up and just leave his ass there. I'm going to stop at that great idea because I don't think I can come up with a better Dumbass one. Dumbass insurance yes. and like rescues. <laughs> yes. All right, stay right there. Final thoughts next. <laughs> Out of time. Thanks to Madison, Jesse Otto, Charlie Hurt, Cat Tim, Iris, studio audience. I'm Greg Gutfeld. I love you, America.